Hi, Mark the Bear, and another video on the Hapax, uh, this time exploring uh, the world of Eurorack and its capabilities with CV. Um, on the first video, um, I didn't really cover Eurorack and CV very much because there was just so much to get through. Um, similarly, on this one, I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on uh, obviously the technicalities of connecting and also dealing with the fact that we've got limited things like CV in rather than going through things like uh, chance effects and whatever. I mean, w we have so many of those capabilities that I showed on the first video, which you can get a link to up here probably, or up here, one of the two. Um, I'm not gonna re-go over that. Um, obviously, what I'm gonna show here is some ideas of capturing with your rack. And then what you could do is you could start to layer all of the stuff that we did in the first video on top of this. So yeah, yeah, mine's gonna blow. Um, I'm going to be doing more videos um, on both Eurorack and on uh, the Hapax. So please make sure you've subscribed um, and also uh, click uh, the little like button just to keep the algorithm happy. Um, and don't forget to leave a comment if there's something you would like to see um, or you would like some more details on. Um, I'm happy to have a chat about that as well. OK, well, we're not going to start with this complex uh, thing. We're going to start with something simpler now. OK, so in this example, what I want to do is to show how we can use a CV gate um, to generate things on a Eurorack module. So for this example, we're using the SSP uh, because it's obviously polyphonic uh, and also gives me quite a lot of degrees of flexibility in what I can do. And we're also going to explore how we can use this kind of in a generative manner. Now, generative Eurorack, that just cries to me, rings into clouds, let's face it. Uh, so basically what I've got on the SSP here, you can see is I've actually got four rings modules and they're coming into my mixer here, uh, which then goes into clouds to give us a clouds type effects as we would expect. Um, so what we're gonna first of all do is uh, have a look at what's going on the setup on the Hapax. So what I've got is tracks one to four here set up with CV gates for one, two, three, and four. And then obviously what we've got going on here is we've got the CV gates going out to the Percussor SSP here. So that's all fairly standard. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, first of all, um, I thought we'd do some uh, generative stuff. So basically we just click onto the algo. And what I'm gonna to try to do is to make the, um, the pitch is a little bit different. So that's how I'm gonna kind of control them. The, the rings are set up quite similarly, uh, but we'll see how we go from here. So let's start with this. Okay, that, no, well, I want something a bit higher than this. Yeah, okay, that, that, that starts. Um, and what I think I'll also do, okay, so we'll come to the second track going to do something slightly different. I will perhaps take it down a bit, first of all. See what it sounds like. Perhaps we'll make it a little bit busier. Okay, well, I can do that for the moment. In fact, no, let's actually make it a little less busy because in fact, what we'll also do is let's also double this track length so we don't get too much repetition, but a little bit less on it, I think. That's what I think I want to do. So step mode. Okay, I need a bit more variation than that, I think. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, I've uh, also set this up into a C minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> That's always handy. <laughs> less notes we have, the more like the less likely they are to clash. Okay, now this track, if I remember right, yes. So this is a more of a call type sequence. So what I think we'll do here is get this. Pretty we're going to do it algorithmically again, but um, I think what we'll do is we'll make it quite uh, uh, sparse. Um, oh, and I want to also, yeah, I think again, I'll make this actually kind of like over four bars. 
because you can hear it's ringing out quite a bit. So let's see what, see what it can comes up there. Um, wrong button. I haven't mean, got any notes. Doesn't seem to want to. I don't really want as much going on. Ah, uh, this is more what I have in mind. Something kind of like bassy kind of thing. I don't know, something... Uh, something not... Zoom, we can zoom out on the, the menu to edit things. Let's, let's, let, let's put in something actually programmatically. Let's. Yeah, if we have something. Yeah, I think this could anchor it because we've got so much randomness going. So let's. I'm just trying to really work out whether or not I actually want this higher or lower, which I'm not, I'll admit, I'm not quite decided on. I think what I do want to do, I think we'll keep these bass notes going, but let, let's uh, let's turn these down a bit. Let's have, for example, these only once every other time, this once every, say, third time. Let's put some percentage on this, just so we have a bit of kind of variation going on. And I think I want to do that a little bit with these other things as well, actually, that we've got here. They're a little bit too busy, so perhaps what I want to do is, rather than start taking notes out, what I think I'll do is, again, perhaps let's just also put them on the grid. No, I don't like it on the grid. Yeah, I want the list to be cut down a bit in percentage, I think that's... Okay. Right, and then we've got a fourth track, so we've got four CV gate pairs here. Let's see what we can get on this one. I think I want something up quite high on this one. I think. I can't remember what's uh, actually this. Yeah, that's 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 kind of what. It, yeah, I want that one kind of high. So let's go into the algo, and we'll we'll let this one actually ring out a bit. I think on the. Okay, so we'll go up a little bit. I think up into the kind of like the seven octave range. So this is the thing with the generator. You kind of want to. Well, I want to at least separate them a little bit in the frequency range, and I want this one a bit dense, denser. Okay, let's uh, try to generate that. Let's see what we get. Oh, I like. I actually quite like that, but uh, I think what I want to do, coming to step, mate, I'd like to double that, and then perhaps just move these notes up a little bit. So we get a bit of variation. So here, here we can see that we use the generator to kind of get us started. Now, why don't we try something? So for example, this one's obviously quite a prominent line. It's a bit too repetitive, I think. But what I'm gonna do is actually, let's copy that pattern and we'll paste it onto this one here. 
I'll come in here. And what I'll do is I'll use another algorithm. So we've got an algorithm here. For melod melodic lines, we can do all sorts of different things. But um, what I want to do here is we've got actually some way to... Well, changing the velocity is not going to help me because I've not got velocity outputs. Uh, we can do things like apply uh, maths on it. That would be interesting. Uh, or we could mess about with the chances so it becomes different. Yeah, perhaps that might be interesting. If I change this to, for example, a ramping curve. So, uh, have we got... Have we got so what that would do is the later notes would actually have uh, less possibility. But what I'm going to do is uh, up here you can see we've got the amplitude. So how much effect does this actually have? Let's um, let's not make it too severe because otherwise we'll just lose all the notes. And let's see what happens if we do... Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if that's actually worked. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, I think what's happened is, I think that's applied it on top of what I've got. which So it was starting up quite high. Uh, because heart chances by default 100%. Well, oh, and also, um, of course, there's a possibility that the generator did some chance on it. But so what I'm doing here is I'm modifying all the notes. So I'm kind of like changing the base point of it. Yeah. Oh, I'm changing the... Okay, but we've also got other algorithms. So, for example, perhaps this doesn't seem to be having the effect I want to be honest. I, I could undo it, but it's not really doing anything for me. What we could do instead is change the symmetry. So this is what this is going to do, is change it over time. And we'll t keep duplicate off, um, which would copy the, um, the new symmetry, but we'll just... So yeah, okay, so instantly we get something different. So I wonder what this is, if we copy this algorithm, this uh, pattern, for example, to this pattern here, uh, and we change to that one. We could now go back to the algo. We could see what the pitch uh, will change on it. Okay, so it's done it quite a low pitch, but that's not a problem because basically it's reflected it around a certain area. So what we can do is come up to step again. I can again hold all the notes and I can actually kind of then just change the octave. Oh, I'm not sure. I, I think I might prefer that one actually. Okay, so now I want to show something similar. So obviously we could build up lots of different variations using that kind of technique, which would be fun. I mean, it's great fun playing with kind of like gentle stuff. Now, obviously, really, the next step would be I would start culling things and perhaps inserting my own notes that I actually think go better. And obviously, also, some of these are pretty short loops. Um, so I, I'd probably look to um, extend the loops. I prefer things over like four bars minimum, really. But what I want to show, I want to show you something different. Um, now, this also leads to a feature request for, for Squarp, if you're listening. Uh, we've only got four, we've got four CB and four gate coming out. But what I actually want to do is to start controlling the Picasso SSP. I mean, I can come into here and I could start changing controls. But actually, this actually has the ability to be able, to, on my plugins at least, to be able to do so-called MIDI learn. So what I've actually done is I've MIDI learned uh, the various parameters for rings and uh, co. So if we have a look at that, um, you can actually see them here. So for example, parameter and dark brightness, I've done here. Uh, now, unfortunately, I can't put them 
uh, on these tracks. Uh, stop, stop that for a second. I can't put them on these tracks because this track is outputting to CV and gate. Um, unfortunately, so it's a real pity I can't also kind of say, oh, but actually for these are signs, can I instead send it to a different channel? So that would be a nice feature, Scarp, if you could do that. But instead, what I've done, um, in this case, I've only got four tracks. Um, so what I've got done is actually I've used track five as a MIDI channel. And it's going over USB device because the percussor supports MIDI. So what's actually happening is the percussor is actually hosting uh, Apex here uh, for MIDI. And so what I've done is I've put CV controls on here so I can change it. That's changing rings one. Now, oh, now, now, and so I've got all of this, and, we, and I've got on track six, I've got, um, oh, sorry, track six, I've actually got my, I've got the mixers on the bottom one here, uh, and on the top I've got parameters for clouds, so here goes crazy. Ah, and, and this one I've got mapped to freeze on clouds. Yes, yeah, so what I was going to say is, let's stop this a second. Um, so what I was going to say is that, um, obviously at the moment, what I have to do is I have to remember all of these CCs. And that's because we don't have um, a feature yet, which is coming soon, uh, which is called uh, MIDI definitions. And what you'll be able to do with those is basically say for your instruments or, or your tracks, as it were, um, what CCs apply to what particular that, um, note parameters. So I'll be able to get labels. So say, OK, these are the mixers parameters and these are the parameters on here. Another feature request for Squart, by the way. The Picasso SSP is actually able to send these parameters out back as MIDI. It would be great if the Hapax could actually listen to those on the assignment, such that if I change something on here, that they're reflected in the assignment. So we have bi-directional control. Just a small feature, but it would be great. OK, now, uh, what are we going to do next? So the next thing is, of course, now we've got these things going as CC, we aren't limited to twiddling knobs we could do something like just create uh i mean we could already be playing on these notes as caused by chances and stuff but what i just thought might be interesting is to put in an lfo here and uh what am i doing and we can select a cc now, I know roughly <laughs> what these values are, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to play with uh, the size on clouds because it's just going to be really obvious. There we are. I told you it'd be obvious. But obviously... An interesting one here, which I know from experience, um, is actually... So what's happening here? Oh, we need a bit more depth. OK, so what's happening there is a, an interesting trick that I play with quite a bit on uh, the Eurorack, and that is actually modulating um, the freeze on cloud so basically it captures a bit of audio and then uh, carries on that can be really fun uh, tends to work better if you're
Obviously. <laughs> Obviously, when it freezes exactly and what it's got in its buffer is rather, uh, well, not random necessarily. And if we actually, uh, for example, if, if we actually synced it here, for example, we'd actually be in much more control of what's going on. Anyway, so what I wanted to show here actually was two things. So first of all, obviously, although we've got one Percussor SSP here, um, that's because you can see it easily rather than showing it on a, a big rack. Um, you, this could, of course, be many different modules that you, you could be using. Um, analog digital doesn't matter. Uh, what's also interesting is the fact that we can use MIDI to control it. Now, I actually find that things like parameter controls, as we're doing here, are quite good over MIDI uh, because obviously I don't. Most of the time, I don't really need um, audio rate modulation. So obviously, in this kind of scenario, it would be a, a kind of a waste to use my CV for uh, the modulation when I can just as easily use um, MIDI. Okay, it's got slightly lower resolution, but that's okay. Um, okay, so I think that's actually what I want to show on this particular one. Um, let's get on to the next example. So this is a bit more of a uh, complex Eurorack setup. Um, that's basically what I could fit on the desk, really. Um, what I want to show is various features that we've got um, with Apex when it comes to CV, but also um, some of the editing features. So sometimes you're a bit kind of limited with CV um, in terms of what you've got like ports for and that kind of stuff. So how you might use it to kind of integrate CV and MIDI. So what we've basically got going on here at the moment is I've got Ooster here, which is a sequencer, and currently it's plugged in to be sending in pitch into the Apex, which we'll have a look in a second. I've got the Rample here, which is receiving the gates from the Apex. And I've got the CV outputs going as modulation into the Picasso SSP. And the ramp is basically going into the SSP um, mixer um, so that I've got the audio there. So that's basically what I've got going. And then the other thing I've got going, which we'll look at, is I've actually got USB MIDI going between the Picasso and Hapax. So that's what that's the setting we've got going. OK, so let's start with um, very simple stuff. Um, I haven't got clock going, and that's because I didn't want to lose um, a gate pair to seek to synchronize uh, Ooster here. Um, and similarly, I wanted to use the input, so I didn't want to uh, sync it to there either. I could have gone via MIDI, but that would have probably introduced latency, so I, I didn't want to get into that complication. OK, so, but anyway, let's start with uh, the drum tracks. So these basically are set up so that they're going to uh, trigger ramp up. Now, what you'll see down here is that this track is actually set up with USB output, but this is only for automation, um, which I'm not going to use, because what we can see here at the bottom here is you can see that rather than MIDI channel, I've actually set it to gate one and gate two and gate three and gate four. So this is quite cool. This means I can actually use this track uh, for up to um, basically as a combination, really, um, of MIDI and um, gate. So that's quite a nice way. And this is what you would do, for example, if you're triggering drums and you wanted, like I do here, to use modulation for other purposes. OK, so let's um, get going on this. And the way we'll do this is um, I think we'll just lay down some, obviously, a, a kind of four on the floor just to get us something. Uh, but then what I will do is we'll go into Algo and I'll show you actually another thing which I didn't show before. So on the uh, Closed hats, for example, we've got this every algorithm, which allows us to create kind of like beats every so many things. So we can, for example, do this. Um, so it's a quick way to, to do repetitive beats. If you've got MIDI, what it'll do is it'll actually, it's going to also be putting in ghost notes via velocity. Uh, but I've not got velocity in here. I didn't think about that. I probably should have done that, but never mind. <laughs> but so we've got that. Um, and we've also seen in before, ha, ha, uh, Rample is probably gating some of these things as well. Uh, or we can obviously we can go back as, as we've done before and we can generate things as well here. OK, 
Okay. So basically we've just got the gates coming out of here. So that's, that's kind of what it is. Um, now let's have a look at another one. I've got um, actually here on five, I've actually got, um, I think a drone plane. So when you're playing these notes on here, um, you can basically set the play mode. So if we set it to relatch, This is actually going through cloud, so it's kind of okay. Let's mute those for the moment so we can hear what else I'm going to be doing in a minute. Okay, so that's those two little things now. Um, okay, so let's now have a look at how we're going to get CV gate from this and record it into the Hapax and use it. So this is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is basically come into track. We can set um, where it's coming in for CV gate input, and that's going to come into this track. And then I've got it going to channel one, which is going to be this uh, track here, which is um, actually a Platz module um, inside the Custer SST. Now, that's all well and good. The problem is if I take this approach, then what's going to happen is I'm only going to be able to record onto one track because I've only got one CV uh, gate pair here input. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use this as a kind of uh, like a scratch pad area. where I, So I'm going to use, record it into here and then I'm going to transfer it somewhere else. So let's do that. In fact, what I'm going to do, no, no we'll, do, we'll do two. We'll do one bar just to keep it simple. Okay, so, uh, so if I unmute that, what I can do is just record this. Okay, so we've got that now. What I'm going to do is to come into the step part here, and we can actually see it's obviously recorded these as we would expect. And I can just do all copy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it onto track one here, which I've got set up to be USB one. Okay, so we can paste this here. Okay, that's cool. Now we might want to start modifying this. For example, yeah, it's slightly out of time, so let's uh, bring it on to grid. Okay. Right, now what we'll do is we'll go back to track nine and we'll listen to it again, see if it comes up with something different. That even better, let's make it do something. Oh, let's delete this. That was previous recording. Okay, two, three. Same procedure, I'm going to copy this, and this time I'm going to put it on to track two. And I'm going to offset it slightly. I've, you can hear I've got slightly different sound on here. Again, I think I think I'll take the mic climbing out. As I say, I haven't got this really synced. That's why. Okay, we can see what that's like in track one. Okay, I think I need one of these. Okay, so now we've got something else going in. I'll tell you what I'm going to do for... Uh, I think I'm going to actually copy this one again. Um, this is on track one. Um, copy that one, and I'm going to put this onto um, track three, but I'm going to paste it slightly offset. 
Ja, es ist... We've got quite a lot of repeats going on with clouds, that's why it's Okay, now we could introduce our drum. Okay, right, so that, that's the basics. So basically we can see we can do that. Now what I want to start to show you is some other aspects. Um, I mean, some things, for example, uh, this one here, um, obviously, yeah, we've already shown that we could do things. This is the drone. Um, we could do things like a simple, we could add a CC here uh, to CC1. I've got it set up for, draw in a curve, and suddenly we... get this so that's interesting but there's some other things we can do so for example you could hear that kind of uh, that sound what we could do instead is actually do something if I switch this over to here I've actually got some more CV being sent out so what I've got here on track two of um, the Usta is I've actually got um, some fairly random waveforms going through because I've basically got a step sequence going around. It modulates itself and then because it's green, it does glide. So this is not sending out pitches now. This is sending out raw uh, plus minus five volts. Now, here's what's interesting. Uh, let me turn off this. Um, what I can do is I can actually record what's coming on here. So if I actually get rid of this for the moment um, and we can go so we'll just press play uh, okay nothing but now i'll add the cv input and i'll say i'm going to recall cv1 and i'll recall cv2 as well while i'm at it now this is a bit this this is a bit odd, really, because if you look at these automation lines, usually you're talking about destinations. Yeah. But this is a, a little, should we say, a special feature is that you can set the destination to CV in one and two, which isn't really a destination. And we'll see why. Because if I start this, if I now have to record, we can see I'm recording. Okay, but what do I do with this? I've recorded some things. Well, here's the cunning feature. What I can actually do is I can go to this one here and I can say I change its destination. So I can now change this to that CC1 destination and voila. Now I've got it actually going to that one. And obviously this is uh, just as editable as we've seen in the past. We can edit things, we can interpolate it. All the, th all the things that we've done in the past. So that's cool. Um, remember, remember everyone, save your projects regularly. 
<laughs> no, he's, it's just if you're doing a demo and something goes wrong, yeah, I want someone to come back to. Okay, so that's quite cool. So we can do that. Um, so now uh, we'll delete this uh, CV line, this level CV line. Now, so what I've shown here already is the fact that, so what we did is we recorded uh, the pitch and gate out onto note tracks, and then we've been able to use them over MIDI to our other synthesizers. So we've kind of used it as a, and we've used it as a CV uh, to MIDI really interface. And also what I've done here is I've been able to record MIDI, that's uh, record CV rather, that is then used for automation, which again, I can record it for a performance and then reuse it for MIDI. Um, I could also, of course, um, change this destination here uh, to CV out if I want that that's okay as that's possible as well but I'll leave it there for the moment um so next what I want to show you um is in fact finally is uh how we can also use these CV ins uh just generally really so basically what we've got here um is on uh, if I come into here so we've got so if I actually I'll just mute this track. Um, now I have to just remember where I've sent right seven. Okay. Right. So this this CV input here, which is uh, number three, is actually going to this Platts instance that we're listening to. So I mean, I could do something like just CV out here. And I can simply go CV out for it. And then I could set the default. So the default uh, that's what I want to do here. So you can hear that here that's so. Yes. Um, we've got editing functions here. We can rotate. Uh, we can do things like uh, uh, move this. Uh, we can. No, nope, can't do that. Right, but yeah, so we can do this kind of thing again. As I said, we can do this. We can edit individual points. We can also do things like. Uh, select a block here, copy it and paste it here. So we've got a repeat. So again, that's that's kind of useful if you want to have longer patterns. Obviously, again, if you've got like four or five bar patterns, then you might want to copy them and paste them around. Um, what other uh, things can we do? Um, I mean, we've not used anything like effects here because it's just getting uh, getting pretty complex now. But we can um, also with the effects, uh, we can take CV in as well directly. Um, and similarly, uh, not not in. No, that's not what I was. Uh, sorry. So if we do CV in two, uh, we could modulate. Uh, oh well, I haven't measured. Uh, I haven't got anything to modulate. Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> we we could we could start modulating, for example, um, the MIDI CC that I had uh, previously. Um, but obviously, the the really fun bit here is to add other effects, and then you can basically use this to modulate your uh, effects here. Yeah. So basically, what we can see here is you can use CV gate um, to come in. You can drive a track and then send it out over MIDI or a CV out as well. If you wish, you can record it, you can edit it. You can start adding crazy effects through the Hermel, the Hapex rather. Um, you can uh, use the CV in for modulation purposes, as we have here. That again, you can record as automation and then you can change its destination um so it could be going out over ccs etc 
Um, or you can just direct it, directly send it out. You can use um, effects to um, be modulated by CV as well, as well as, of course, uh, modulation loss. Oh, yeah, that's, of course, the other thing you can do is if you if we come into the automation name, which I've got here, um, so I've got this recorded thing. Not only could it go to CV out, but this could actually go, he says, uh, if we create an effect here, uh, so for example, a chance effect here, uh, if we turn this down, we could now come into here and change its destination to the chance effect, say for example, the chance percentage here. So, I mean, because you can automate that as well, you can go crazy on that as well. So a huge number of possibilities in uh, a very simple system, really. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed all of that. I hope you managed to follow, just regardless of all the cables and stuff like that. Um, I hope it's given you some uh, ideas for how to use uh, Eurorack CV and stuff with the Haypacks, um, or any other kind of system, really, and how you can kind of like edit things and get a little bit creative. Um, we didn't go into some of the details because um, that's obviously in the previous uh, video that I've done. So uh, go and have a look at that. I'm going to have more videos, as I said earlier. Um, so subscribe to the channel. Uh, give us a like to tell us that you were going in the right direction. And I'll see you in the next one.